And so you start with John 3.16. And you know what you're going to do now in John 3.16? I'll show you as we go through the diagram. We'll see. You're going to want to go through the, what are we going to do? The first thing we're going to try to explain from John 3.16 is the what? Context. And once we get through that, we're going to want to go to what? The content. And then we're going to want to go to the result, excuse me, response, and then the result. And it's all in this verse. Not, okay, you can use this verse as a launching pad for every one of those. Right in order. See what I mean. We're going to start with God. This is what you can say. So let's say you're talking to Charlie. Charlie, I just want to start. This verse starts with God. I like to say it this way. This verse starts with God and ends with life. Right? So as we explain this today, hopefully that will be exactly what happens with you. We want to start with God. We want to end with eternal life. Okay? Let's start with God. What do we know about God? Here we go. We're going to now, from just that word, we're going to do the first three points, of, of, or all three points of the context for the gospel. Okay? What do we know about God? Diagram. Here we see God right here. Um, you, you can put in none of these things, all these things. The di diagram certainly has some areas for your own artistic license. Okay? But uh, the idea is you're just drawing a triangle. Triangles, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you don't have to, I actually would probably take that out. I'd never write that in. That just, you know, confuses things maybe early. But you have God, okay? And one of the primary attributes we know about God is he's holy. And that's what we want to start with. In fact, it's very good to ask them right here because the more conversation you are, the better. Is hey, Charlie, you've heard of holy before. What do you think holy means? Okay, it's very good to ask them that. Um, a lot of times they know, they'll say something similar to what you're after. Um, or else you can just fill it in. But holy means perfect. Holy means to be pure or perfect. And so now what are you explaining? You're explaining the holiness of God. God is holy. This is one thing we all know. In fact, every Bible usually says holy Bible right on it. And so the idea is here's God. He's set apart. He's perfect. He's pure. He is without sin. And most people kind of, yeah, I've heard that. Okay. And you just explain heaven is a place without sin and so forth. And you can look at a verse on the back. Oh, you can explain also that holiness, if you want, you don't have to, but you can add, carries the idea of righteousness and justice. Um, God is, loves what is right, and there's actually a sense of, you know, uh, just the consequence, if you want to explain that quickly here, against sin. On the back, now I have Isaiah 57, 15, because I didn't have time to change it, because I keep working around different verses. But just either one of those verses on holy, just pick one, and as you read it, notice what you want to circle. I encourage you to circle the word holy. So what you've just shown is God is holy. You can use it on either one of those two verses. Okay? Now, we go back to the, to the diagram, or whatever. We could just say now, if God is holy, this explains, this is uh, something else we've got to realize. God has given us the Ten Commandments. And they're right on your diagram. And he gave them to illustrate to us his holiness. He gave the Ten Commandments to be like a mirror so we see ourselves compared to him, and we see the standard. This is what it is like for God to be holy. Thou shall not lie. Have you ever lied, Charlie, as you're talking with this person? Well, yeah. Thou shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Well, yeah, I've done that. You should always honor and obey your parents. Well, okay, I've never always honored my parents. So what are you showing? You're showing that as you compare yourself to the commandments now, to God's standard, you are a sinner. You have broken that law, and therefore you are guilty. Okay? Is there a verse for that? Now you can go back, if you maybe you're already were still on there, and we're going to go to Romans 3. But before that, you just see that there's uh, Romans 3. I'm sorry, you can just say, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so we see here, Charlie, that God's holiness is going to reveal that you and I are sinners. And so you could circle that. Holiness reveals. Holiness exposes what we are. And not only are we a sinner, but now I have one more thing I want to explain in the context, right? Holiness of God, sinfulness of man, and okay. consequence. It's on your orange sheet, the penalty of sin, the consequence of that sin. So if I'm a guilty sinner, what does that mean? That means there's going to be a consequence. And the Bible says the consequence for sin is death. Death explains here is a separation. So you're just trying to explain death and separation. We put a barrier here between God and man. We have a barrier. On one side of the barrier, it's very what? Holy and pure. On the other side of the barrier, it's very what? Sinful man. All of the world is here in this sin. We have all broken the law in one capacity or another to some extent or another, 
and we deserve the consequences of sin, which is death, and that means permanent death, final death, is in a place called hell. Okay? So, do you see, Charlie, you're a sinner? Yep, I saw that. Would you agree you're guilty? Yep, okay, so therefore you deserve death. Do you see it says that? And uh, the final place of separation is hell. Can we see a verse on the back? Romans 6.23. We're just moving right down the list. The wages of sin is death. Okay? So what do sinners deserve, Charlie? Sinners deserve death. Are you a sinner? Yep. Okay? All this is exposed and revealed by God's holiness. There you see then the context of the gospel in that verse, just by using God. So when you start using John 3.16 for God, we want to stop and explain now God's holiness, your sinfulness, and the consequence of that sin. And you've now explained the context. So where do I want to go now? I want to go to the content. Well, John 3.16 refers to that right here. Very next part of the verse, God loved so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. From there, I'm going to explain now the content of the gospel. To explain the context, now we go to the content. And so... We go back to our diagram. This is the bad news. This is the scenario. If we left it at this, this would be bad. But the good news is that God is a God of love. So we can add love and God's attributes. This is what people love to hear. You can explain love in a variety of ways. It's unconditional. It's sacrificial. But God's love is giving. And so coming from heaven to the earth is Jesus Christ. God gave his only begotten son, John 3.16 says. I often will ask, who's his son? Well, that's Jesus. And I'll even ask, how did Jesus die? Well, on a cross. See, they know these things. So you're just reminded of that. Now you draw the cross. God's love sends Jesus Christ. He comes, and he comes to earth, and he comes for a specific purpose. He died. And he died, he was buried, and he rose again. So you explain now that God demonstrated his love, as you're using Romans 5.8, if you'd like, and he died for our sins. So you're explaining now the content coming, God in his love sent Christ who died on the cross, was buried and rose again, and the Bible says he died for all of our sins. There was a reason for that death, for our sins. This is where you could use an illustration on substitution if you want, or of this sort, showing that Jesus died for you. On the back, as you're going, you're going to be going back and forth, you're working on this diagram, and now you're going back to the verses, you can have them read, or you read Romans 5.8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I'd encourage you to circle, Christ died. So now you're emphasizing. See, here's the death of Christ. The wages of sin was death. What did Christ do? He died. So you see that he died for you. He died for me. Christ died for us. Now, you've explained the content, and now you can explain as well that he has risen and that God is satisfied with this death. And so we just note this idea of God's justice here being satisfied. Okay, now you don't have to explain the words propitiation. You don't have to explain that. You just can explain how when Christ died, this covered and paid for all of your debt. He died for all of your sins, and God says, I have accepted that payment. Okay? And the resurrection is proof of that. We see now a living Savior who has overcome sin and death. All of your sins have been paid for. So God has solved the problem. Okay? And we have now covered, I was going to say paid in full, we've now covered the content of the gospel. So you see where we've gone from God, context. Now we explain this part of John 3, 16, content. It's very helpful to go right back to the verse, and just as you're working through John 3.16, this is helpful for them. You say, now I'd like to explain to you, what do we do? That whosoever believes in him, this is the response. So now we're going right through the verse, and I'm ready to go now to the response to the gospel. What does the Bible say? Whoever believes in him. You can explain what believe means here if you'd like. This means faith, to trust, to be persuaded. And a key verse on this, we just add this to the diagram now. We just add in the blue there, right here, faith. This is what we need to add now, faith. This is the one human response. This is what God has given as a condition for you and I to respond to the gospel. So we're putting our faith in him. But they need to understand more detail, hopefully, 
and be willing to hear more. You explain to them Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, thus anyone should boast, and I would circle faith. Now, faith, you can explain, requires an object, right? It needs to be in something. What is your faith in? And notice what the verse clearly says not to put your faith in. It is not in yourself. Sometimes I'll just put an X right there. Can you see, Charlie, going to heaven has absolutely nothing to do with yourself, nothing to do with your lifestyle, because it goes on to say it is not of works. Grace is undeserved favor. It's completely a free gift, salvation is, totally based on Christ's death for your sins. Often reviewing the things you've already explained, reviewing those things you've circled is good over and over as you're going up and down. Okay? So you're emphasizing now it's by faith and it's a gift. And you can, again, spend time here because this is what they don't know. This is what's new. This is what's clearly challenging their thinking. That it's by grace, that it's by faith alone, and that it's a gift. So at this point, you've now explained the response to the gospel. So what's left? The result. And we're at the end of John 3.16. The result is when you believe in him, what does God promise? The one who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the whole goal. Do not perish, but have everlasting life. And so now you can explain a promise. You can explain take trusting God at his word. And what this means is that you do not go to hell. So we can kind of go back in your diagram. We can cross that out. See, we've solved the problem. This is the bad news. This is what we deserve. But because of God's love and this message, our sins are paid. We now put our faith in that. We will not go to hell. And I forgot to make this stop blinking. But you can have guaranteed eternal life. And that's really the whole point, right? We can, here's a guarantee. Jesus Christ guarantees you, promises you, delivers you eternal life and salvation from hell. The moment you believe and you trust in that. And that's the, the result. And so that's why you can ask, do you know? Do you know for sure you have eternal life? That's what it comes down to. Either you have it or you don't. Either you possess this or you don't. And so that is the response that leads to a result of the gospel. So you can read 1 John 5, 13. These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Okay? Now this might be all they have time for, but what I was always like to encourage to do here is at this point to say, um, now did I even explain anything to you that was really you know, different or new, really? I mean, did you know, Charlie, that God was holy? Had you heard that before? Well, yeah. Did you know that you were somehow a sinner? Had you heard that before? Well, yeah. Did you know that even there was a consequence, a place called hell, somewhat, somehow, somewhere in there? Yeah, I knew that. Uh, had you heard that Christ died and was buried and all that? Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Uh, you know, and have you heard that you have to believe before? Yeah? Okay? So, I like showing that. I'm really not explaining anything that's that different. But what we are doing is we're connecting dots here in a way to help you understand. How can you know you have eternal life? Because your faith, your confidence, is not in yourself, right? But your confidence is in Christ. And he's the one who died for all your sins, satisfying a holy God. And you're just saying, what I'm really doing here is hopefully just connecting the dots, things that you already kind of knew that were out there, and it just hopefully makes sense now. And a lot of times they'll go, yeah, this really makes sense. I've never quite heard it before. And I'll say, there's one thing you didn't know, Charlie. There's one thing that is new here, and that is grace. And you see that box on your chart, if you can get there, um, on the diagram? That's where you want to write in, undeserved favor. I mean, I was writing that in every time on this diagram, so I thought, why don't we just make a box for that so that everyone can see that really, really clearly. This is the glue that puts all this together. This is why perhaps it's making sense now. Because you're understanding truly the right context, the holiness of God, and the fact that it's only by grace. And so grace, you can explain here and emphasize again, this is what's different. And this is why it's making sense. And truly you can see it's not a reward, but it's a gift.